guys. The spring is one of my favorite times to get out on the bay and its tributaries. Today I'm going to walk you through some of the wildlife and fish that you might see throughout the course of the spring as you follow the complex migrations that take place in this region. The Chesapeake Bay's tributaries receive a surge of biomass from tidal waters each spring. This biomass comes in the form of fish, which spend most of their life in brackish or salt water, but return to fresh water to spawn. These fish are called anadromous fish. One type of anadromous fish you've probably heard of is the salmon. These fish are well documented due to their miraculous ability to climb waterfalls and whitewater to return to their original birthplace and spawn. Our anadromous fish don't jump waterfalls, but they certainly trigger an exciting series of ecological events. As depicted in this video taken by Jay Fleming in the spring of 2020. The spring run usually starts in late February with the arrival of yellow perch when water temperatures reach the upper 40s. Soon after, white perch and striped bass will arrive in the bay's tributaries. Both of these fish are in the marone genus. The next species to show up will be four species in the infamous river herring family. These include alewife herring, blueback herring, hickory shad, and American shad. These fish typically begin to arrive in the bay's tributaries in March and stick around for the first few weeks of May. To me, it's truly amazing to think of river herring as a vector of energy getting pumped out of the ocean and into the bay's tributaries during the springtime. This is a video of herring spawning on Deer Creek in May of 2020. River herring were harvested extensively for centuries and are now protected under a moratorium or harvest ban in Maryland and Virginia. Catch and release fishing for shad is one of my favorite activities in the springtime. If you pay attention to things like the arrival of fish-eating birds or the annual blooming of the shad bush, you can time your fishing trip up with the peak of the shad run. When water temperatures rise in May, the spring run typically tapers off and the bay's tributaries quiet down. Large striped bass, which are particularly intolerant to high water temperatures, hightail it out to cooler waters of the Atlantic, where they will begin their coastal migration to New England waters for the summer. It is also during this time that the bay's famous blue crabs become active and begin their summer molting. Maryland's first wave of peeler crabs will shed in the grassy waters of Tangier Sound and prompt the arrival of a crab-eating giant, the Red Drum. These fish have been managed by a well-coordinated effort from several Atlantic states over the past few decades, and they now arrive to the bay each year in strong numbers. Their annual activity on the bay from spring to fall lines up almost perfectly with the molting season of the blue crab. As May wears on, blue crabs will molt and mate in the warm, shallow grass flats of the lower bay. As water temperatures reach the upper 60s, the first wave of female sponge crabs will move to the mouth of the bay. Each sponge crab carries millions of fertilized eggs, which it will deposit in the Atlantic Ocean off the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. Thus begins a conveyor belt of egg-bearing crabs 
moving from protected waters inshore to the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean, which will continue throughout the summer. The timing of the first sponge crabs moving off the coast correlates with the arrival of the cobia, or crab eater, into Chesapeake Bay waters. These fish can grow to excess of 80 pounds and will often cruise along the surface in the same portion of the water column that sponge crabs use as a highway to the Atlantic Ocean. My favorite part about fishing is observing, intuiting, and developing my own knowledge base, which changes every time I go out on the water. And I hope this video demonstrates the idea that being a good angler also means being a good naturalist. I challenge you to get outside, enjoy the weather, make some observations, and toss out a line. You'll be surprised what you learn, and you just might get hooked.